This is a great little question that comes out of an exam. And the reason why I like it is because it's quite simple to begin with. There aren't multiple parts to it or anything like that. And yet its simplicity uh, masks the fact that it can be approached in many different ways, and some of the ways seem quite complicated. Um, if you do work out what the best <coughs> way of solving it is, it is quite, <coughs> excuse me, elegant and simple, and I will show you that. But I'm actually gonna show you uh, three different ways to approach this question, and you'll see some are better than others. Um, in an exam, often we try and design questions that will have multiple ways to solve them, so that we are testing to see if students can look at an array of strategies and work out which one, not just which one works, but which one is the quickest and the most efficient, okay? So, uh, the question is find the equation of this tangent, of a tangent, to this function that passes through a particular point. Mm, okay, so before we do anything, uh, you've got to work out, well, what is this function? What does it look like? Now, some of you might recognize what the shape is, but for those of you who don't, um, a bit of manipulation will quickly show you uh, what it's actually equal to. Now, you've got y equals the square root of something, and remember that the a square root, um, it must be positive, okay? So, you must note that um, at the beginning, you've got this range restriction, okay? But apart from that, once I note that, I can square both sides, and a more familiar shape emerges. So if I square both sides, still noting my restriction, okay, and rearrange a little bit, so I have my x's over here, okay, what's this? I should probably write that 9 as a 3 squared. Um, well, this is a circle, right? Its center is at 1, 0, and its radius is 3, okay? Now, this equation is a circle, but I noted this range restriction. So with this restriction on there, um, I don't get a circle out of this. I only get the top half. This is a semicircle, okay? So what does it look like? And this is the kind of shape we're talking about, okay? So there's the semicircle, there's its, um, its center at 1, 0, and because it's got a, um, a, a radius of 3, it goes up to from 4, and oh, this is back over to minus 2, okay? Now there's 6, 0, that point right there, okay? So this is the tangent in question. I'm trying to work out what's the equation of, of this line, okay? So how can I go about this? Well, um, my first method is going to be using calculus, okay? Now, this is a, it's a year 11 exam, so people know calculus by now. And if you want to know the equation of a tangent, okay, um, you can define the equation, or any line really, any straight line, by a point that it goes through, there's one, six, zero. And the other thing you need to know is its gradient, okay? Now, to find out gradient, that's one of the things that we often use um, calculus for, right? So if we can work out what the gradient is right there, at that spot, okay, because that's where it's tangent to this semicircle. If I can work out the gradient there, that's the gradient of the whole line, and then I'll be able to say what the equation is, okay? So, uh, how will I work that out? Well, for starters, let's take this function, right? Uh, y equals, now it's a square root, but I'm gonna write it as a, um, um, in index form, because that'll make it a little easier for me to, um, sorry, that's squared, for me to differentiate, okay? If that is the function, what is its derivative? Okay, so you've got, um, it's, a, it's a little awkward, but if you're patient with it, uh, it's not too bad. So I've got some chain rule happening here, right? Uh, in fact, I have two instances of chain rule. So I've got this function, which is to the power of a half. So what's the derivative of the inside function? And the derivative of the inside function is, um, well, let's have a look. You've got minus x minus one, all squared. Okay, so I've got a, uh, minus sign out the front. Sorry, here's my derivative. There's a minus sign. Now I bring the power down, becomes two. You differentiate the inside, you just get one. And then uh, you reduce the power by one. Okay, so now that's the derivative of the inside. Okay, now I can start to do the outside. I'll multiply by the power. So multiply by a half. And then I'll reduce the power by one. Now that will make the power minus a half, which means that negative sign means I'm underneath this, the on the bottom side of the fraction, I'm the denominator, and minus a half, well, that'll become the square root again. Okay, so that's that. Just to do a little bit of tidying, um, you're gonna get that half out here is gonna cancel with the two, okay? And that's just a one, so you're gonna get minus x uh, plus one. So one minus x all over the square root of this. Okay, so there's the derivative of that semicircle, okay? Now, if only I can find out what the actual x value of this point is, then all I need to do is sub that value in, and then I'll know the gradient at this point of the semicircle. And once I know the gradient, the tangent will have the same gradient, and off I go. 
Okay, so how am I gonna go about working? Uh, what's this uh, X coordinate? Well, if you do a bit of geometry, um, you can see that there's a, um, well, you know, from, from the center of the circle up to the tangent, right? If I draw this line in like so, um, because it's a circle property that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius at the um, point of contact, okay, I have this right angle here, and we already know that the radius of the circle is three. Now, um, from here, one to six, that's a distance of five units, right? Five units there. And because it's a right angle triangle, uh, that means I've got a three, four, five triangle. Okay, so three, four, five, right? Now, remember what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to work out this x value, this, this distance here. How am I gonna do it, okay? The easiest way is probably to uh, take this, um, this altitude here. Okay, if I, if I chuck a right, right angle in there. Okay, if I can work out some distances in here, for instance, if I can work out the distance from this point here up to there, if I can work out that distance, then um, I can add one to that and I'll get this, um, I'll get this whole distance, which is the X coordinate. Okay, so this is starting to get, there's a lot of information on this diagram. So in order to work out what this uh, distance is, I'm going to redraw just the, the triangle part of the diagram so it's a little less cluttered for me, okay? So let's uh, clean this off here. Okay, now what do we have? I think we had this kind of arrangement, okay? Um, this side was three, this side was four, um, this whole side was five, but rather than write in five at the moment, I'm going to draw in the altitude, like so. And remember, this is what I'm trying to find this distance in here, okay? So I'm gonna call that capital X. Now since the whole distance, we, the base we said was five, that makes this section here five minus X, okay? And um, one more label here, I'll call this Y, I suppose, capital Y, because it's a, it's a vertical distance. Won't matter what it is anyway, because I'm gonna sub it out in a second. Now, uh, let's remember that because I, um, this is an altitude, I've got a right angle here, I've also got a right angle here, okay? So I've got two right angle triangles and they're related to each other, okay? Let's have a look at this triangle here on the left. I can say that x squared plus y squared is equal to nine, right, by Pythagoras, okay? So if I rearrange that, I'm gonna make y squared the subject because I'm gonna get rid of it later on. So I'm just gonna stow that value, that result away for a second. That was a left hand triangle. Now have a look at this triangle. Um, the sides are a little more complicated, but they're not that bad. This is five minus x squared down here, plus this shorter side again squared. That should be equal to 16, because that's the square of the hypotenuse, okay? So now, I can substitute this y squared for nine minus x squared, okay? So I've got five minus x all squared, plus nine minus x squared, that's 16, okay? And now you can see this is not gonna be too hard, I just need to tidy up a little bit. So let's expand this guy, that gives me 25 minus 10x plus x squared. I'll kick that nine over, which is gonna make a uh, seven over here, and that's minus x squared, so these, these cancel, okay? Bring the 25 over, so that gives me minus 18, so x is equal to, um, I can take out a factor of two and I get nine over five, okay? All right, now bring that back over to this diagram. So that tells me this distance in here, the red distance is nine over five, okay? Which means that the X coordinate I'm after is um, one plus nine over five, because you can see I go one and then I go nine over five, that distance, okay? So um, the X value I'm after, um, this, this coordinate of this point is, um, one plus nine over five, which is, uh, let's see here. Well, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that because when I think about the derivative, um, it's going to actually be useful to me um, to have that one plus because I'm gonna have some, uh, some subtraction in a second. So let's just keep, keep that in our heads. That's the x value that I want. Um, remember that the derivative, dy and dx, is equal to um, one minus x all over the square root of nine minus x minus one, all squared, okay? So when I've got this particular value, one plus nine over five, what's going to happen? Well, on the top, um, I'm going to have one minus, one minus that, okay? So the ones will cancel and I'll just be left with the 
uh, minus nine over five. Okay, fractions on fractions, so just watch out and chuck some brackets in there. Then what do I have on the denominator? I've got nine minus, now I've got x minus one, all squared, right? And that's x. So when I take away one, I just get left with the nine fifths, right? Nine fifths, and that's squared. Okay, so let's see, I've got minus nine over five up on the top there, and this, I worked out earlier actually, is gonna end up being 144 over 25, okay? So, so far so good. And this is gonna be equal to <clears throat> minus nine over five on, now that's a square and that's a square, that's 12 squared and that's five squared, so it'll be 12 on five. The fives will cancel, so you get minus three quarters. Okay, now that's actually the gradient that I'm after, the gradient of the tangent, okay? So I can say the tangent will have an equation and um, remembering that what I've got is a gradient and a point. So I'll use a point gradient form, which looks like this. Okay, so let's see here. Um, what were the coordinates? I think it was six, zero, wasn't it? So y minus zero, this will be x minus six. And here's my... Uh, gradient in there minus three quarters. Okay, so now when you multiply out if you just put that in um, in general form You're going to get uh, Multiply the four across and you get minus three x plus 18. So we'll just tidy that up And there's your answer, okay, so that was method one which was calculus Okay, because you needed to differentiate uh, and because you were substituting in the a value of x for, at the derivative so you get a specific gradient, um, that's why we had to muck around with those triangles. Okay, there's the first solution. Now there's another way of doing this. Um, in some ways you might, you might call it a, a cleverer way, um, though it'll end up being, it'll still take quite a while of working. Let me get a new color here. Um, and that is to use the discriminant. Okay, now what's the discriminant? Um, the discriminant is when you've got a, um, when you've got a quadratic of any kind, okay, the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And the reason it's important is because when you look at the quadratic formula for a quadratic, b squared minus 4ac is what's underneath the square root, right? When you're solving, solving this guy, you'll get minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So you can see here that the value of the discriminant is very important. If the discriminant is negative, then this thing will have no real solutions because you're taking the square root of a negative number, okay? If the discriminant is positive, you'll get two roots. Most significantly, if the discriminant is zero, that means there will be, you know, when you think about the roots of this, it'll be minus b plus or minus the square root of zero. So that's minus b plus or minus zero. So you just get minus b on 2a. There's just one solution when you have a discriminant of zero. That's really important, okay? So we're gonna use that fact in a second. You just have to tuck it away and remember. What I wanna do is think about the fact that, okay, when I uh, solve these two uh, equations separately, um, the equation of this semicircle and the equation of this tangent, okay, then I should be able to find one and only one solution, right? Um, so that's where the discriminant is going to come in. So what are the two equations I'm trying to solve? You've got the semicircle, which is this guy, Okay, and then you've got the tangent. Now, um, you can see, even without having done the previous question, that um, the tangent is gonna be in this form, right? And I don't know what the, um, the gradient is yet, at least, because I, I restarted this question, but I do know the points that it goes through, um, which is uh, six, zero. So I can know that the equation of the tangent is at least in this form, and all I have to do is find the gradient, which is what we were doing last time with the derivative, okay? Now, therefore, if I want to solve these simultaneously, okay, I'm just going to say, look, let's take this, okay, and uh, solve it simultaneously with this, okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna run into some problems in a second because I'm going to square everything, okay, um, but we'll resolve that later, okay. Squaring everything adds another solution, so later on we're going to have to remove one, okay. So I'm going to try and uh, solve this. Well, at least, at least rearrange it so I can um, find the discriminant out of there, okay? So what's gonna happen? Let's just square both sides here. Uh, don't forget to square both parts of the product, okay? Now, if you um, expand everything, what are we gonna get? Nine minus, uh, let's see here, okay. X squared minus two X plus one, okay? 
Um, this is a little awkward, but it'll be m squared x squared minus 12x plus 36. Okay. Now, what I want to do is get everything all together. Okay. So if I expand out first, um, I'm going to get 8 minus x squared plus 2x from the 9 and the 1. Okay. And then if I expand this out, m squared x squared, 12, another m squared, x, and then 36 m squared. Okay, now my goal is to get it into this form, okay, because then I'll see what a and b and c are, and then I can work out my discriminant, okay? So if I put this into general form, let's get all the x squareds together. How many are there? There's m squared x squareds here. That's a bit confusing, isn't it? m squared lots, and there's, when I bring this over, there'll be one lot, right? So there'll be m squared plus one lots of x squared, and I put them all together. How many lots of, of x are there going to be? There's going to be this many. How many x's? And then your constant term will be, uh, and I'll put it in brackets just to make it clearer. That's going to be your constant term. Okay. Okay. So I've just gotten the um, this awkward long equation into general form. Okay. Now don't forget what this equation is. Uh, what it represents is because where I started was was here, right? Uh, which is the point of intersection. Once you solve this, you're solving them simultaneously, you get where these two things intersect. Now, the whole point of me doing this is because I, I know, because it's a tangent, right? This is, this is what it looks like, yeah? I know there should be only one point of intersection, okay? So that's really useful to me. Now, having, having got that, I've put it into this awkward form so that I can see that that's, that's A, that's B, and that's C, okay? So out of that, I can now work out the discriminant. Um, the discriminant is B squared, um, b squared, sorry, b squared minus 4a, that's a, um, c. Okay, now this looks really terrible, okay, but a lot of stuff's going to factorize out. For instance, if you have a look here, you've got uh, a factor of minus 2 in here, right? So if I do some bigger brackets, you take a minus 2 out, that's going to give you 6m squared plus 1, okay, and that's all squared. And the reason why that minus 2 squared uh, is useful is because there's a 4 there. So they're both 4s, okay? So they're going to cancel in a second once I write all of this out. And so our numbers will be not quite as awkward as they uh, were going to be. So that's going to become 4, so I'll just get rid of that. I'll just leave him off, squared plus 1. That 4 is going to go. Uh, the reason why, by the way, I can, I can get rid of it is because I'm saying the discriminant is equal to 0, right? So I'm dividing both sides by 4. Minus this... Okay, and so now, even though this looks terrible, especially the fact that you've got an m squared squared here and an m squared squared here again, um, things are going to go nice and neatly because, for instance, have a look at what happens here. Um, that 6m squared all squared becomes 36m to the 4. Then you double that, and then you get a 1 on the end, right? Then what happens here, you're going to subtract. Now, if, when I expand this out, you're going to get another 36m to the 4 there, right? Then minus uh, 8m squared, that's the first two. Then plus 36m squared minus 8. Okay, so that's going to cancel with that. Let's do a bit of tidying up. 12m squared plus 1 minus, okay, minus 8 plus 36. What's that? That's 24, right? 24? Wait, hold on. 28. 28. Positive 28, minus 8, okay, so 12 minus 28, that's going to be minus 16 m squared, plus 1 minus, minus 8, so that's plus 9, it's always equal to 0. So now what have I got? Uh, take that minus 9 over the other side. This is starting to look familiar because you actually already know from the first way we solved it um, what the value of m is, right? So m squared is 9 on 16. So now here, uh, at this point, if this is the first way you solved it, right, you can't expect, um, you can't just exclude an answer um, and say, look, I know which one it's going to be. You have to include both and then provide the justification for why you're excluding one, okay? So I think probably the easiest way is to say, well, look from this diagram, being that we've got the top half of the semicircle here, the line that we've got is clearly decreasing, right? So its gradient, its gradient has to be less than zero, okay? So I would say that on the basis of the diagram, that's sufficient, supposing your diagram is actually half decent from the diagram, okay? Therefore, you can exclude the positive answer and you get this 
only. And that brings you back to, because we already had, we already had the um, equation of the line, and then it goes just the same from there. So what did you get? I think you got 3x plus 4y minus 18. Done, okay. Now, that was the second solution, which is with the discriminant. That was still pretty long and awful though, and there was lots of little opportunities for the algebra to go badly. Um, not to mess the algebra, algebra really, just as the arithmetic, um, which even, even I myself made a mistake. So, is there a better way? <laughs> and the answer is yes. Now come back to this original diagram, okay? Um, there's something hiding in here that is, is going to be super, super quick to work out the answer, and it actually is introduced all the way back when you first do right angle triangle trick. Um, which will be either year 9 or year 10, depending on which stage 5 stream you're doing. Now have a look at this triangle here, okay, this one here, uh, which is, as we noted, it's right-angled because the tangent is perpendicular to the radius, okay? And because it's right-angled, and I know what all the sides are equal to, right, that tells me a lot about the angles of the triangle. In particular, for instance, if I look at that angle in the corner, call that theta, okay? Now, because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, right, I can say on the basis of this that tan theta is equal to opposite on adjacent, which is 3 quarters. Okay, now that seemed a bit sort of plucked out the blue. Why would I, why would I say, you know, um, tan theta? Well, because, remember the whole, what makes this problem hard, why we introduced calculus and why we had to muck around with the discriminant, is because I'm trying to work out what the gradient of this line is, right? That's the hard part. That's the only real thing you need to work out because I know I'm already going through this point. And of course, if you remember, um, gradient is connected to tan, right? Because tan is about opposite on adjacent, rise over run if you draw the appropriate triangles, right? Now in this case, you can see that m is not 3 quarters because, like you said, it's decreasing, right? So I can say from the diagram, on the basis of the fact that tan theta is equal to 3 quarters, um, m has to be minus 3 quarters. I can say it simply on the basis of the fact that tan theta is 3 quarters. That's it. I don't have to fuss around with the derivative or anything like that. And I already know it's in the form y equals m outside of x minus 6. So you simply have to substitute that in and then rearrange everything into general form just like we did before. And there's your answer in, I don't know, less than 30 seconds, however long it took to get that. Okay, so classic example of where there's lots of different approaches to a question, and what's really being tested is not just your understanding of quantum geometry, but whether you can uh, work out what's the fastest, most efficient way, because otherwise it'll cost you for the rest of the exam, even if you get it right, but the long way around.